Hey kiddos, we are going to get into lesson nine. Um, we are going to be multiplying much like we were today, but in lesson nine, we're actually going to be doing some conversions of measurements. So let's give it a try. Hey kiddos, let's look at C here. We are going to um, do our conversion and then we're going to... Good <laughs> the will begin right at two in the library. That was Mrs. Kleinkopf with a message. I have five minutes to do this. Okay, so we're going to do our conversion, and then we're going to uh, draw a tape diagram that demonstrates our conversion. So we've been working on conversions all throughout the school year. We're going to set this one up the Eureka way. This, I understand, is not the way that you're going to be, may not be the way that you're doing conversions for the rest of your life, but this is one way to do a conversion that is very thoughtful and meaningful. So for our first line, we're going to rewrite five sixths of a year as five sixths times one year. This side of the equal sign is equal to this side. We're just rewriting it so that we are setting ourselves up for a very thoughtful conversion. Our next line, we have five sixths times some amount of months. We're doing some amount of months because we're converting years to months. Keep in mind, on this line, we need these two values to be equal to one another. So we have to think about one year is equal to how many months? Well, one year is equal to 12 months. Now we're just going to do the multiplication or set up our multiplication. So we have 5 times 12 as our numerator, and then we have 6 as our denominator. That's what we worked on today in class. Before we multiply these through, let's see our, oppor our opportunity for simplification. 6 and 12 are both divisible by 6, meaning we can divide 6 by 6 and we get 1. We can b divide 12 by 6 and we get 2. So now 12 isn't a 12 anymore, it's a 2. 6 isn't a 6 anymore, it's a 1. Now we have up top 5 times 2 which is very easy for us to multiply, and up down at the bottom we have 1. 5 times 2 is 10, over 1 is the same as just 10. Okay, so we have 10, 5 sixths of a year is equal to 10 months. Now I'm going to draw a tape diagram that represents that. So our whole tape diagram represents 12 months, which you guys know is equal to 1 year. Whole tape diagram represents 12 months. We're going to chop though that rectangle into six equal pieces because that's our denominator that we're given. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. If we're going to divide 12 equally across six spaces, what would we have in each space? Well, that's just 12 divided by six, which is two. So inside each box lives a two, and a two, and a two, and a two, and a two. And a two. So six twos is 12 months. We're looking for five six. We're looking to just support this work that we've done on the left. So um, five six is equal to 10 months. Five six of a year, I should write, is equal to 10 months. Very, very cool. This word problem, and then we'll call it a night. Uh, number four, this is in our problem set. A jewelry maker purchased 20 inches of gold chain. So let's kind of visualize this happening. She used 3 eighths of the chain for a bracelet. How many inches of gold chain did she have left? Okay, so let's just very quickly draw what we know. So she purchased a jewelry maker. She purchased 20 inches of gold chain. So our entire re rectangle represents 20 inches. We're going to chop this rectangle into eight e equal sections because our denominator is eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, Three eighths, three eighths 
are used for a bracelet. Okay. How many inches of gold chain did she have left? So three eighths are used for a bracelet. That means one, two, three, four, five. That means five eighths are left. We want to know how many inches are left. We know five eighths of 20. We know five eighths of 20 represents what she had left. So that's our expression. Now we just have to figure out exactly how many inches would we find in within 5 eighths of 20. Well, we know that 5 eighths of 20 is the same as 5 eighths times 20. So let's just go ahead and do our multiplication. Upstairs we have 5 times 20. Downstairs, we just have 8. So we have 5 times 20 over 8. Can we simplify this at all? Does 8, do 8 and 5 ha have any factors in common? I'm afraid not. Do 8 and 20 have any factors in common? Well, we can divide 8 by 4, and we can also divide 20 by 4. Okay, cool. So that'll simplify it a little bit. If we divide 20 by 4, our 20 is going to become a 5. If we divide 8 by 4, our 8, 8 divided by 4, is going to become a 2. So that simplifies it a little bit. Now let's, let's rewrite our expression. Up top, we're left with 5 times 5. And down at the bottom, we're left with 2. So let's go ahead and multiply. 5 times 5 is 25. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys that the secret word is marshmallow. Secret word is marshmallow. So 5 times 5 is 25, and then we have 25 over 2. This is an improper fraction. We need to simplify this. We can do that very easily by just finding 25. I think a few of you could probably do this in your head. If you can't, no shame in that. Let's just divide 22 by 2. 2 goes into 2 one time. Thank you, Kate. 1 times 2 is 2. The difference when we subtract 2 from 2 is nothing. We'll bring our 5 down. Thank you, Miles. 2 goes into 5. 2 times. 2 times 2. Thank you, Anna. Is 4. Our difference between 5 and 4 is 1. So we have 1 half left over. 1 half left over. 5 eighths of 20. This stuff right here, 5 eighths of 20 is 12 and 1 half. So uh, the jeweler has 12 and 1 half inches left. Pretty straightforward. Cool. So we'll continue working on these types of word problems tomorrow. Um, so we are going to be doing some conversions, and it's going to be great. And I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow.